Johnson here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about balancing value, the law of equivalent exchange. Now we hear a lot about equivalent exchange. We certainly see that a lot in regards to understanding alchemy, understanding magic, looking into really a lot of what the universal laws are. In fact, there's even a TV show called Full Metal Alchemist, and they completely surround themselves with the idea of this law of equivalent exchange. Is this real? Is this an actual law? Absolutely. The whole idea is that the universe itself is all about a dynamic system of balance. That everything relating to how we interact within this universe, how we interact through life, how we interact through reality, is all basis of exchange of energy. So if we feel that we are not able to really value equivalent exchange, we feel that, again, we're down the dumps, we're in despair, we're in fear, and we can't look into the idea of how exchange can be equivalent, can be equal, then we are going to be at the mercy, so to speak, representing the rebound of what we are clashing with. Negative emotions will bring about the exchange of negative transformations taking place, manifestations within life, positive intentions will bring forward positive manifestations through exchange in life. It's the rebound. The rebound itself can be everything. It can be referred to again as attraction, etc. But if we're looking at this boomerang that's coming all the way back around, this is our intention right here. Our thought structure, our belief systems, our mentality, and just chucking this boomerang and coming right back. And so everything relating to equivalent exchange has the ability to bring you into a life of great balance, a life of harmony, as long as you are able to see the value in everything that you do. When we're looking at equivalent exchange, it's not always about looking at the idea of money. Equivalent exchange is just looking into the idea about how you can naturally move yourself into the alignment of the reality that you prefer by balancing out the energies as a responsible human being. The quote often relating to equivalent exchange is that you can't get something for nothing. To achieve something, you must replace something in return. So in that sense, what it may state is that in order for you to gain something, you must lose something in return. Now, it doesn't have to be seen like that. If we're looking into the idea about how equivalent exchange can work, if we were to say that this circle here was us, and that we have all this water contained within the circle, where this circle represents our lack of self-value, our unworthiness, our despair, our fear. Yet this circle is very, very adamant in wanting to get happiness, wanting to bring in financial abundance, bringing in a lot of joy, bringing in a lot of divine awareness. Well, if that's the only water that's going to be filled in a circle that represents despair, that represents fear, you're not going to get the equivalent exchange pertaining to that. Everything that represents happiness there will always be the mirage effect in the desert. Equivalent exchange is basically saying, well, you're holding on to all this water. All this water is your fear. All this water is your despair. How do you expect to get equivalent exchange relating to something that is happiness? When you still have a circle full of water here, you can't do it. You cannot attract what you are already holding on to. That is equivalent exchange 101. This is, again, how we're attempting to balance out the value of ourselves. So, in order for us to achieve happiness, we need to work in this area. We need to find out exactly why all this water is here. Why is there this ocean of fear? And what can we do to allow the transcendence of that ocean of fear, so that we can now have a circle that is completely empty. And now when we are able to transcend all that fear, when we're able to transcend that despair and that anger and that hopelessness, and we've been able to now see ourselves as that empty container, well now we're ready to fill it. Because we have transcended that, and now equivalent exchange will allow you to begin seeing the value, seeing the intention, seeing the manifestations and actions needed to bring yourself into happiness because you have allowed that cycling of 
energy of water, as it were here, into a transcendence of happiness. You've made the jump. You've been able to you know, drink down that water, and now that circle is empty. And now you can transition it into where new water is filling up in regards to happiness. And now you keep drinking the water down. You keep flowing with that energy. Everything in the universe represents cycles. It represents flow. So this is what we want. We want to create the idea of cycles, of flow. We want to keep energy moving. It is when we have those stagnant forms of energy that they form into belief. And it is through that form of belief that we cannot allow ourselves to transcend to the areas that we prefer. So this is where we're looking into how equivalent exchange is a negotiator. It is a result about telling you, well, if you want equivalent exchange relating to what you're doing right now to bring forward happiness, you cannot vibrate to the degree of happiness if all you're holding on to is despair, anguish, and fear. If that's all you're vibrating to, equivalent exchange will only give you those particular attributes because that's how the universe works. The universe is never going to feel sorry for you, pat you on the head and say, for you, for you, you know, it's awful that you're doing this well here. Here's some happiness for you when you're not feeling it. No. It's all about looking into this ocean and how you can transcend that ocean into happiness by, again, acknowledging that that particular fear, that despair exists, being able to forgive yourself and drink down that water and allow that flow to bring you into a new state of liberation. Equivalent exchange will follow that. Right? So this is where you're basically looking at the idea of saying that you can't get something out of nothing. And it's pertaining to this. That it's not about the idea of saying, well, I have all this despair, but I want some of this happiness as well, too. Do I deserve it? Do I see it in the balance of my value? No, not at all. And so despair is what I believe. Fear is what I believe in. Fear is what I think is my personification of value. That's what equivalent exchange will bring forward. Right? So the whole key here is being able to understand that Whatever it is you want to do, whether that's improve your finances, improve your career, have a beautiful relationship, go traveling, etc., whatever it may be, you can allow equivalent exchange to operate in bringing all of this great balance together with you. But you must allow yourself to vibrate to what you prefer as well as take in everything that you have right now to transcend it, to transition it. So rather than the idea of thinking that in order for you to gain something, something must be lost, it's more so on the idea that in order for you to gain something, the transcendence of what you hold on to that does not serve must happen. So you're allowing that transcendence to take place. I really don't subscribe to the idea of something being lost, because within creation, within all that we understand reality to be, nothing is ever lost. Everything's just different vibrations, different frequencies. We're moving into a different reality that serves us, that can be commemorative to equivalent exchange based on how we want to live our lives, following a path of naturalness, following the natural law of ourselves. And that is following the heart path. You follow the heart path, you live the heart path, you are the heart path. Equivalent exchange will work together in that way. It will always represent the balance of where you feel your value lies. So this is, again, going back to whatever it may be, finances, etc. Do you feel that you want to make all this money, but you have such issues with money itself? Equivalent exchange is not going to honor that. You want to be a millionaire, you don't even like money. How are you expecting to be a millionaire? You want to have this really, really high-paying job, but you don't see yourself on that level. You see yourself, again, as kind of a grunt, right? Doing all the grunt work, the 9 to 5 working in the cubicle, etc., and you want to be, you know, the co-vice president, whatever it is, right? That's, again, still something within yourself to where you feel that that is going to cause disruption in trying to reach out for a frequency of that nature because you're not on that level. Equivalent exchange says, no, this is what you're vibrating to right now. So this is what you must receive. This is the boomerang effect. This is the rebound, right? That's the whole key with equivalent exchange. So... You really want equivalent exchange to work together with you. It firstly begins with seeing what you're still holding on to. What is it that you feel is still on your mind? What do you feel is this ocean that you're carrying together in your body? What is the void that you're starting to see as well too? 
And it's about being able to look into yourself, fulfill those voids by, again, acknowledging, forgiving, and attaining liberation. An equivalent exchange will work together with you divinely in that way. Thank you so much for watching. For further questions relating to this video or any others, please feel free to contact me, info at consciousmatrix.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brad Johnson, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Take care. Namaste, and may it be well with you. Goodbye.